So Dennis Prager is having another fireside chat where he tries to convince us that this is how he relaxes and such. You know, while wearing a suit. And in this case, while wearing a suit that the pants don't match the jacket. So when I think about all these violent demonstrations of the last year in America, I mean, really, just month after month of violent demonstrations. Violent. The violence was inexcusable. It's something that politicians should have been willing to call out instead of being so scared of being called racist or fascist. And, of course, all we hear about is January 6th at the, at the Capitol, because the press only wants you to think about that rather than what has happened for a year uh, in America. Yes, media should have been more responsible, just like politicians should have been more responsible. Media shouldn't have had headlines like, oh, mostly peaceful protests, while you can see buildings burning in the background. It was just ridiculous. You know, they shouldn't have been scared of being called racist or fascist, you know, for speaking against the violence, right? But none of this changes what happened on the 6th of January. It doesn't change what happened at the Capitol. Okay, the people who stormed the Capitol, many of them wanted to kidnap or even kill politicians. They wanted to overturn the election. They wanted to overturn democracy. You know, I mean, you can't compare what BLM and Antifa did to what happened on the 6th. But when I think about even, even the nonviolent demonstrations, the anger that people events like the Two, two and a half years ago, was it? The, the, the Million Women's March or whatever it was. All these women walking around thinking they're oppressed. They may not be very oppressed right now, but if people like you had their way, they would be. Oppressed in America? A woman? You're, as a woman, you're oppressed? Are all these middle class and upper middle class women you know, wearing uh, bunny hats. How did they explore? What is not bunny hats, right? Cat, because uh, <laughs> because of the uh, our former president's reference uh, to uh, to cats, as they are sometimes known, uh, with the with a different word. <laughs> you you can't say the word, but you were all right with Trump saying it, right? But, uh, I mean, give me a break. What do you, what do you, by the way, what do you, what did they say to their daughters? Their six year, seven year, eight year old daughters. Yeah, mommy is wearing, uh, a, 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 you know, bunny ears or cat's ears. Uh, and mommy, why are you wearing that? So, is it really that difficult of a discussion to have? I mean, even if you just wanted to make it a fun thing, oh, I'm wearing this for the fun of it. You know, is that too difficult, too? I mean, are you that straight-laced? I mean, should uh, you wear a suit and tie to go grocery shopping? I mean, how far do you go in this mindset? And, and what did she say? What is it? We have made an art now of depriving uh, young children of their innocence, like with the drag queen uh, story hour at schools? How far do you want to take this concept of keeping kids innocent? How much information do you want to keep from them? How many things are you going to lie to them about in order to keep them innocent? I mean, are you going to teach them that children are born, uh, they're delivered by a stork? Maybe the cabbage patch theory? You know, maybe continue to try to, to tell your kids that Santa Claus is real even when they're like 12 or 13 years old? I mean, how far do you want to take this concept? It's really mind-blowing. So I was thinking the left, and I don't mean liberals, I mean the left, as you know, I always make a distinction. They are what you may know in your own family. These are drama queens. Now, what is the defining characteristic of a drama queen? Love of turmoil. That is the opposite of the easy person. It's the opposite. They thrive. It is their oxygen. Turmoil is their oxygen. For the drama queen or drama king, turmoil is, is the air they breathe, the food they eat. 
those of us who don't like turmoil don't can't it's like telling me somebody likes to eat grass i i i, I can't relate to it the left are all about turmoil and yet people like you make this huge deal about anything that the left pushes, uh, you know, new ideas or repackaged ideas. Oh no, it's going to be the end of our civilization. Look out, everyone. And yet we're the drama queens? Really? But that's what it is. The left, they don't feel alive without turmoil. Look out, everyone. It's communism. That's why there are constant hysterias. Everything's an existential threat. Have you noticed that? Communism, look out! Everything's an existential threat. Of course, climate change. Oh, uh, we have 12 years to go. I have been hearing we have 12 years to go since 1990. But 1990 was 31 years ago. So we had 12 years to go, then we had 12 years to go, and then we had 12 years to go. But things are doing fine. Do you know that? Things are pretty fine. I'm not saying the world's not getting warmer. I'm saying it's not an existential threat to the world. Just because it might not be just 12 years away doesn't mean it's not an existential threat. But people who love and thrive on turmoil see it as a threat to the existence of Earth. Yes, because unless it affects the stock market or it threatens Abrahamic religious supremacy or unless it's pushing new ideas or repackaged ideas, you know, it's it's no big deal. Nothing's any sort of big deal except for all the things that you get outraged over, right? 